Someone once said that a child is like a flower waiting to bloom. All that's needed is love. And through laughter and tears, hopefully our children grow up to be the source of joy and pride. But there is a group of children that stands apart. They face life from a different perspective. They grow up fighting battles that few of us know anything about. They are the children of St. Jude Hospital. And from them, we can learn the real meaning of hope and courage and love. This is the story of three such children. First, meet Holly Wallace. Hi, my name is Holly Wallace. I am seven years old. I have a male leukemia. Holly has acute myelogenous leukemia. It's the worst form of leukemia that a child can have. But Holly never complains. I love all the nurses and doctors. I am a patient at St. Jude Hospital. I'm writing this book to help people with cancer. She's a special little girl. She loves everybody. She loves life. She has tried, I think, in these two years to do everything that she could possibly do. It's to her, sleep has been a waste of time. Holly's an extremely bright little girl. I think Holly is living life with gusto. She realizes the seriousness of the disease, uh, and she wants to experience everything she can. You know, even up to last week, she was getting dressed up and going out on a date. You know, I mean, this is Holly, and if you see her with her makeup and you see her dressed up, uh, that's just her style. Holly's denying that she is going to die. I think she realizes that. Uh, she knows she's going to die. And she's seen other children, and those other children have died with the same disease. But Holly is is saying that it's not now, and it's not her time, and it's not her at this moment. And she's going to go on living just as long as she can. Okay. You start to appreciate what's important to Holly, and you start to help her enjoy living what time she has. Holly has this knack of winning everybody over. Nobody's a stranger. She can walk down the hallway and you'd be walking with her and it's like, oh, hi, Holly, because everybody knows her. They see those big brown cocker spaniel eyes and they know, you know. It's hard to describe Holly, because I love Holly. I, I love her very much. She's my assistant. She, uh, she puts patients in the room. She calls them back, puts their name on the board, and they make her clean the room. She gets 50 cents a day. Can the next call come to be section, please? You got it. <laughs> Holly's in relapse right now. Uh, she has been for a couple of months. And all of us deep, deep down have a, a hope that something is going to work. Something is going to get rid of this terrible thing. Relax is the pit. It means that you've got cancer again. And, it, and you have to have back sticks and blood and more medicine. The worst medicines I've had is LSD. It makes me sick the rest of the day, and sometimes more. Then I feel gross. They started out with seven different drugs, bad drugs. So strong. God, she was so sick. You know, you almost wonder sometimes which is worse the chemotherapy or the disease. But you know in the long run that it's the disease. Without the chemotherapy and without the treatment she's had, she would have been dead long ago.
this this last last drug she had. They didn't know if the human body could tolerate it or not. It was so strong. Still, even after all this, all all the strong drugs and everything, the cancer is stronger. And it just keeps coming back. It just doesn't kill it. It just, you know, he says, well, take her home and let her enjoy life. Make some memories. Danny Thomas. On behalf of St. Jude Children's Research Hospital, I want to say how proud we are to bring you this important program. In the next few moments, I'm going to be telling you how your call to this number and your pledge of $16 a month can help save the life of a child. You know, when I look at the children like Holly, so full of love and life, I want nothing more than to hug them and to think good thoughts. But I know it takes a lot more than that to combat childhood cancer. It takes months, sometimes years, of costly medical treatment and decades of research. That's what we've been doing since 1962 when we first opened the doors of St. Jude Hospital. In that time, not one child has ever been turned away because of his family's inability to pay. And during this hour, you'll learn why every second counts in the ongoing battle to save young lives. But right now, I invite you to call and become a St. Jude Partner in Hope with a pledge of $16 a month. Every month you'll receive a picture and information about a St. Jude child your gift is helping. Please call now. And you need to know that St. Jude Hospital is not supported by any institution or religious faith, but by the gifts of people like you. That's why some child urgently needs your call and pledge of $16 a month. Or if you prefer to make a single gift, of Twenty-five, fifty, or a hundred dollars. Make that call right now. Thank you. Hello, I'm Christina, an operator here at the St. Jude Phone Center. We're already busy taking your calls. When you call and become a partner in Hope with your sixteen dollars a month, you'll receive a picture and information about a St. Jude child your gift is helping, and we'll send you a special display folder for your pictures. Remember that St. Jude is not supported by any particular religious faith. We need your call. Thank you. Hi. Is my head on straight? <laughs> no. I can't see too good. This morning, Holly is meeting with her social worker at St. Jude. The session is important. It helps Holly deal with the pain and the fear. The puppet's name is Hope. Every time I take this medicine, I take it to get my, rid of my leukemia. You know what happens? It comes back again. Why is it doing that? I don't know. I take all my medicine. Except for sometimes when I hide it under my pillow. When people who've never been at this hospital ask me where I work, and I, I tell them where I, that I work at St. Jude. They kind of step back, and they'll either um, talk about the weather or change the subject very quickly, or they'll look at me and they say, how depressing. And it's very hard to let them know, no, it's not depressing. Sometimes when it's bad, it's real bad. But most of the time, this place is full of hope. This place is full of life. It's not full of death. Um, and I think that's what's similar between Holly and this hospital. It's about life. How much medicine have you taken? Oh, I don't know. Too much. <laughs> too much to. Too much to tell. 
How come you got to take more? Huh? How come you got to take more? Because I got this new again, and now I have to get rid of it. What am I going to do? This time going to work. Yeah. You know, I might just get tired of taking this medicine and tired of my hair falling out. I have to take it in very, very small steps um, with the understanding that in all probability Holly won't be with us much longer. I gotta go upstairs for you and get some more medicine. So I said that I have to go upstairs to get my medicine. I can get my medicine out, patient. But it'll make me have a fever. It'll make my platelet count go down. <gasps> it'll make my hair fall out again. Again? Again. And it'll make me sick. Just when we start growing hair again. I think Holly has given me an enormous amount of love, um, perspective on my life. I think this is a child that teaches you that. It says, here I am, here I am today. <laughs> That's what she's telling us. Don't ever give up. I think that's the miracle of St. Jude, that, that you don't give up. We've learned that. You don't ever give up until you're absolutely forced to. And then you keep trying after that. Hoping for a mission. I hope that I can get into a mission again pretty soon. A mission is great because when you're in remission, you don't have cancer anymore. And here's the picture. Who are those people? That is me, Mama, and Chris. You know what I'm saying? Hip, hip, hooray, I'm in remission. Oh, I wish I could say that pretty soon. Yeah, me too. Makes me sad. Yeah. You'll get in remission. So will I. I better. What are we going to do if we don't? We will, someday. <laughs> Brian McAllister is also a patient at St. Jude. He also has leukemia. But Brian's story is different from Holly's because Brian has achieved what Holly can only dream about. Brian is in remission. For now, there are no signs of cancer in his body. For Brian, his family, and the doctors at St. Jude, it's been a long, hard fight. When Brian arrived here, he was three years old, and he was quite sick. He was very pale, he was running fever, and uh, he had complications because of this uh, excessive tumor mass. I thought he was going to die. We thought death. There's no doubt about it. It's like one day he was healthy, and the next day he's going to be taken. He's going to die. When Brian came, we did a bone marrow examination. Those cells went to some of our colleagues in the different laboratories here at St. Jude, and investigations were conducted so that when we see a patient here at St. Jude, we are giving them treatment, the best treatment that we know, and at the same time, we are conducting research at a more basic level in the laboratory. After they had ran the initial test, when he came to me, and uh, he told me, he says, we know exactly what Brian has, and he described it, and he said, we know exactly how to treat it. That's the first time I ever wanted to just take a man and hug him yeah. when that doctor, but he had so much confidence. It just made me feel great, and he said, we know exactly what to do with your son. So that gave us a lot of hope. The hope for the best is something that it's crucial in any given interrelationship between the parents, the doctor, the child. The best thing about St. Jude's is the doctors and nurses, because they've been so nice to all of us, and they've helped us to learn not to be afraid. Dr. Avira 
is, besides just being a doctor, he became a friend of Brian. Most children are scared of their doctors. Brian will go up to Dr. Rivera, joke with him, tease him. He has a lot of confidence in his doctor. I was surprised when I have called you to give you the uh, report, Brian, today, because today is a very important day, as we discussed earlier, probably the most important one since you brought him here to St. Jude Hospital. As you recall, when you first came, he was a child at high risk. First, then we had to induce uh, remission, and we were able to do that. He has never had a relapse of leukemia, and his bone marrow examination today show no evidence of leukemic cells. So that as of today, we will only check him every so often, periodically, but no further chemotherapy will be given at this time. Okay? So we will uh, continue to follow him closely. His chances will become better and better. Wait, let the boy get ahead of you. Brian has planned for um, a big celebration, and it'll be called a coming off therapy celebration. Coming off chemo party. He's worked for it. He's worked so hard for it. I'm gonna have a big celebration because they've done a lot for me. I wish all the children in St. Jude's could be well and never have to go through this again. I wonder who would help us without St. Jude's. I, don't, I wouldn't know what to do without it. Brian is only six years old, but he has wisdom way beyond his years. He knows firsthand that without expert treatment, he and other children with catastrophic diseases wouldn't stand a chance. But you can help make Brian's wish come true, a wish that all children of St. Jude could be well and never have to go through these devastating illnesses again. Lord knows it's been my fervent prayer. You see, it's unacceptable to me that even one child should die or be in pain. When you call right now with your pledge of $16 a month, you'll be helping to provide the chemotherapy and the surgery a child needs to live and the research needed to develop the next desperately needed treatment. Recently, my daughter Marla visited St. Jude Hospital. Let's go there now. You might expect a hospital dealing with cancer and catastrophic diseases to be a very sad place. But as you can see, there's a lot of laughter and hope here. And one reason is that the staff works hard to keep it that way. There's no scrimping when it comes to love and hugs and words of encouragement. But there's one other reason for hope here, and that's you. There just wouldn't be any hope or hospital without you. If you haven't called with your pledge of $16 a month, would you do it right now? Or some of you might prefer to make a single gift of $25, $50, or $100. Whatever you can give, your call is so important to a child. Make it right now. One reason why your call is so important is that cancer treatment is expensive. Just one day of chemotherapy can cost as much as $400. And many children have months of them. But how, how could we deny a child a chance to live? That's what your $16 a month as a partner in hope is all about. Now for your convenience, you can use a Visa or MasterCard for automatic monthly payment. Just have your card ready when you call. Now, if your circumstances change and you need to discontinue your pledge, we'll understand. But some child needs your help right now. Perhaps you'd rather make a single contribution of $25, $50, or $100. Don't miss the sense of fulfillment that comes when you help bring life to a child. Friends, we just can't give up. The children don't. So call right now. <laughs> It's the day after Brian's coming off chemotherapy party, and Holly is starting a new chemotherapy program. It's an experimental drug. The doctors are beginning to run out of options.
few hours later, another patient, three-year-old Brandon Burdick, arrives at St. Jude for a crucial examination and tests to see if his cancer is growing. Brandon has a brain tumor. It's rare, very difficult to treat, and almost always fatal. When Brandon and his parents first came to St. Jude, I uh, saw Brandon first in the cafeteria, looking as uh, normal as any child his age. Looking over the x-rays and listening to the story, it was quite, uh, quite amazing to see him looking as well as he looks then and as he still looks today. In terms of his prognosis, uh, it's uh, unfortunately fairly clear. The type of tumor that he has, a glioblastoma, is uh, as malignant and uh, devastating as any type of cancer that people have. I'm not aware of any patient that's survived with currently available therapy. So that his prognosis is, is very, very poor. The thing I cherish most in Brandon is the great love he has for all of us. I don't know, he just a sunshine in your heart, I'll tell you. He uh, he really brightens up the day for you. You can learn a lot from watching Brandon, just by his love for you and his manners, just his love for life. Even down at uh, St. Jude, the first time he had chemotherapy, he came out and after he was going home, he came out and gave me a karate kick. I'd never realized there was such a number of children that have cancer. And to see those kids and how they hold up, every one of them touched my heart. Oh, it's given us a tremendous hope. We were without any hope until my son took my grandson down there. We were without any hope at all. When they came in and told me that Brandon's spinal fluid had uh, cancerous cells in it, I broke down and cried at one time. The hardest part was the time where that he first started on chemotherapy and seeing him get sick. It's hard on your hearing and on your kidneys and it upsets the stomach a lot. He knows it's something he has to do. Even when you tell him it's time to go to St. Jude's again, he doesn't get upset. He just faces it like a man. You look at the medical reports and it, he should be dead. And you look at Brandon and he's up running around having a good time. You go with your hope, you go with your, your belief. We believe, both me and Lynn believe, that he is going to be cured. You can never give up. quite a bit different than leukemia, where we can count the uh, number of cells in the bone marrow. In brain tumors, uh, we're, we're stuck with imaging the tumors by indirect means, such as CAT scans or MRI scans, and in Brandon's case, the MRI, magnetic resonance imaging scan, has been the most uh, valuable test for him. Brandon's chance of going into a remission, uh, which, if we mean by that, a complete disappearance of all tumor it's uh, very, very unlikely. Unfortunately, the best we can hope for at this point is that the tumor will stop growing.
We've treated him with chemotherapy and used the drugs that we know to be most effective in, in brain tumors. We've given him uh, radiation therapy. And so at this point, what we'll do is to uh, just watch and, and wait and see if this tumor will start to grow again. In one week, it will be Christmas. Holly's new chemotherapy treatment is taking its toll on her body. Unfortunately, it is doing nothing to stop the slow and relentless spread of her leukemia. And although every day seems to bring her closer to the end, Holly remains determined to fight and survive. Holly's like, a, in some ways, a cat with nine lives in that she's already lived longer in relapse with recurrent disease than most kids have. For every newly diagnosed child, there is a chance. In Holly's case, I think she has a potential still, though very slim, to respond to additional treatment courses. And I'm sort of <clears throat> keeping up my sleeve a few investigational drugs that are still in early phases of human trials. If she doesn't respond to further treatments, she will die because of the fact that her leukemia will likely produce complications that will be fatal. I think from the standpoint of hope and courage, Holly excels in style of living in that she carries on uh, quite a bit. Uh, beyond what most kids would do, maybe, with leukemia. Frankly, I think she loves coming to the hospital. I mean, I think, you know, it's a big treat. She wants to come more often than not. In fact, for her, it's a big social event. Cancer is the most horrible word. It's the most horrible thing. I just, I hate it. I, I try, try to act like not necessarily everything's all right, but everything's going to get better because Holly senses my mood so much. And uh, so I try to fake it through the day and into the night because a lot of times she doesn't sleep. When she does sleep, then I can go off in the corner and go berserk or do, you know, sit down and cry or do whatever I have to do. But stay busy. That's, that's, we stay just as busy as we can. have to keep doing something to try to keep your mind occupied. <laughs> I wasn't going to tell her that this last treatment didn't work. Still haven't told her, but she knows. Yeah, I think she knows. She asked me last night, had I been crying? And uh, she said, you're not telling me something. I know you're not. And I keep thinking, why spoil her Christmas? She's so lovable. She, she loves with her whole heart. It's a little short. She doesn't think of herself as eight years old. Sixteen is the perfect age for her. Sometimes she's grown, sometimes she's just a little girl. She and I have gotten so close. I don't feel quiet. The doctor told me that uh, 
we should be able to make it through Christmas, maybe her birthday. It's a little over a month. I brought her in last Monday. Filling up blood, running fever. Couldn't walk, screaming every time we touched her to even examine her. Gave her blood and platelets and hooked up the morphine. And Dr. Muriel says, call me at home. He said, I, I really don't think she'll live through the night. And no, uh, she walked in the next day, smiling. He said, well, she's fooled us again. The doctor told me, he said, I can't believe this kid. She is so tough. I think she's going to fight all the way to the end. She doesn't want to die. She doesn't want to give up. Imagine you're a child again. Then imagine never having a chance to watch your talents blossom, to fall in love, to marry, or to have children of your own. Friends, the St. Jude children want to live. Like Holly, they want to know the experience and joy and fullness of life. Won't you help give them a future? Call now with your $16 a month pledge and become a partner in hope. Your monthly gift will help provide the care, the surgery, and the research a child like Holly needs to live. When you become a partner in hope, each month we'll send you a picture and information about a St. Jude child your gift is helping and you'll receive an attractive display folder for all your pictures. Help bring life and hope to a child. Please, make that call. You know, it's been 25 years now that St. Jude Hospital has been pouring in love and hope to children of every race and religion. And during that time, no child has ever been turned away because of his family's inability to pay. It's one reason why your call is so important. Now call with your pledge of $16 a month or if you prefer, a single contribution of $25, $50, or $100. But please don't delay. Your call may help give a child like Holly or Brandon or Brian their only chance to live. Now, before we go back to our program, let's hear from some of our partners in Hope. I see the faces of the children, and when I see the faces of the children, I don't need to hear or see anything else. That's enough for me. I know that those children are being held. It's so easy to give that $16 a month. You don't even miss it. I mean, not go out to dinner once, or whatever. I, if you get into the habit of giving it. Carry a picture of one of the children in my wallet and helps me keep my life in perspective. And I feel good about it. It gives me a sense of worth. I think it's a good cause. It makes me feel good. Please pick up the phone. Every gift counts in our battle for life. Call right now. Brian is back at St. Jude. Because he is off chemotherapy, he has been away from the hospital for four months. Today is his scheduled checkup, and although he looks good, there is always the chance of a relapse. In a few moments, he will be given a bone marrow test to see if the cancer has returned. It will take two hours to get the results. His mother is scared. You're off therapy, so you're where every parent wants to be. So you see, you're not, you're not exactly in the same boat anymore. So it's a different feeling. But yet it humbles you to come back because then you see I could... Within two hours, we could be back on the other side of the country. It's scary. It really is. I also have to be prepared in case there is a problem and uh, would have to face a problem because at that time, it would be such a devastating situation for the parents that I am the one who has to be strong and uh, help them accept that. and. Uh, Offer a solution. Amanda, wish me luck. Hmm? Wish me luck. You do that,
Foundation is a, this is a very good uh, bone marrow sample. It's a remission marrow. There is no evidence of leukemia. The bone marrow is good. Mm -hmm. oh, I'm so excited. Are you serious? Uh -huh. Okay. I have the spinal cord. Happy day, you want me to <laughs> Okay, great. great. All right. There's always that possibility that Brian could relapse one day, which would mean that he would have to go back on the therapy. And if they ever relapse, it's harder for them to bring them back into remission. So I believe we'll always live, even though we feel that he will never relapse, there's going to always be those night sometimes when you're sitting up at two in the morning it enters your mind what if so leukemia is something that's a lifetime fight it's a very painful disease it's a very tiring treatment i couldn't be more proud of him he is so strong and it's funny because his strength has made david and i strong The word that the parents most use is hope, a haven for hope. Because you have none before you start, and then when you walk in, you immediately feel it. It's like God gave St. Jude that feeling. It's a very peaceful feeling, and you know that there's hope there. Even at the worst times, I've seen some of the parents, even after their child's relapse, there's always another medicine they can try. I don't know, I think the most important thing that they've given to me is another two and a half years with Brian that have been so precious. We've had three Christmases. It'll be a wonderful future. There's lots of hope, lots of hope. Earlier this morning, Brandon returned to the hospital for another MRI exam. They are worried that his tumor is growing again. While the doctors study the tests, his parents play the waiting game at a local ice cream parlor. We've come to the conclusion, though, that he may die. We may lose the pregnant, but we'll never quit. And I know Dr. Horowitz and St. Jude's will never quit also. I went over the CT scans with Dr. Langston, the uh, radiologist. The uh, MRI scan actually shows us a nice uh, view of the tumor, much better than we'd seen with previous MRI scans or CT. And I'm really pleased to see that the tumor has not changed mm -hmm. at all. Uh, there's no growth in the tumor. What that means is that the chemotherapy seems to be controlling it and that we'll continue treating him as we have been. Then you'll start the radiation after the three next three months of chemotherapy. Right. We'll start the radiation uh, in mid-January, and that radiation will last for about six to seven weeks, a daily radiation treatment. I, I know that the hardest thing that you, you have to do is to wait. I mean, that what's going to happen next? What's, what's, what are these tests going to show when you come back in three months? So, and what's going to happen after we finish the radiation? And unfortunately, I can't give you answers to those questions, and I can't make your waiting any easier. I can tell you that today looks good. Looks better than I might have guessed it would have looked. You doing good? Yeah. <laughs> I find it a tremendous um, privilege to deal with children like Brandon because it allows me 
to keep in a focus what's important about life. I know statistically, if you read the books, the chance of curing someone like uh, Brandon is uh, very poor. On another level, I think the, the thing that allows people who work at a place like St. Jude to deal with children is the hope that we uh, have that what we're doing it improves things. As we've just seen, even when the chances are poor for children like Brandon, the doctors and the staff of St. Jude Children's Research Hospital won't give up the fight. They know that every child represents the opportunity for increased knowledge for that elusive breakthrough that will save lives. Unfortunately, brain cancer is the second most common form of malignancy found in children, and it's one of the most difficult and expensive to treat. Half of those diagnosed with this form of cancer die. My friends, we've got to keep on fighting. We've got to eradicate this grim reaper that destroys so many innocent lives. For the sake of a child, become a partner in hope. Call now with your pledge of $16 a month. As a partner in hope, we'll send you a picture and information every month about a St. Jude child your gift is helping. And you'll receive an attractive display folder where you can keep all the pictures. Believe me, folks, there is no better feeling in the world than the joy and satisfaction that comes from helping others. Be a partner in hope with your $16 a month pledge. And for your convenience, you can use your Visa or MasterCard for automatic monthly payments. Now, if your circumstances change and need to discontinue your pledge, we'll understand. But it's important to call now. Or you may prefer to make a single gift of $25, $50, or $100. Whichever you choose, please pick up the phone. Every gift counts in our battle for life. Call right now. This is Christina again here at the St. Jude Phone Center. Taking these calls is really a pleasure for our operators because we found that people feel good about giving when it's really making a difference. If you haven't called, get in on that good feeling of helping a child. Believe me, St. Jude is a place where you'll know your money is being spent wisely and efficiently. Call right now with your tax-deductible pledge of $16 a month. Know you're making a difference. Become a partner in hope. Thank you. Hold it up, Brandon. Right. Write my name. Can you write my name? Hmm? When Brandon completed his final chemotherapy treatment, the next step and perhaps his only remaining hope was radiation. That was five months ago. <laughs> harder, yeah, harder. Well, you almost got it. Blow. Oh, you did it. <laughs> I'm bound. Yeah. Brandon has had uh, maximal therapy with surgery and chemotherapy and radiation therapy. At this point, we're following him very closely to detect exactly what status he's in with his tumor. As best we can tell, Brandon's disease has been stable or slightly diminishing uh, following chemotherapy and again following radiation therapy. Our hope would be that we've bought uh, either as much time as possible or permanent time. Hey, Brandon. What are you doing, guy? I'm, I'm running. You're running? Give me a kiss. No. His situation has been, and to a degree remains, a very serious one. But uh, things have looked good. Brandon's done well, far beyond what would have been projected. And uh, as you've seen, Brandon's, Brandon's living. Brandon's having a good time doing what he's doing. He's grown hair now, and uh, he's gaining weight, and he's eating more like he did before he ever got sick. He's got a belly. <laughs> <laughs> and hair. And hair. A belly and hair. The dark days are over. Now we're enjoying. We're enjoying him. We're enjoying getting back to normal. But there's always that feeling. It's still there. You never know when it's going to throw you back into the fire. And there's still the possibility that we might lose Brandon. There's always that possibility. 
because the tumors are still there. They can start growing at any time. If Brandon does die, we took him to St. Jude's, and we have to feel that that is the best place we could have taken our child. Well, without St. Jude, I'm not even sure Brandon would still be alive right now. He's so special to us, and he's been through such a hard time over the whole year that he's been sick. Now, Dr. Horowitz said they're using his plan of treatment, of care, in 50 other hospitals around the United States. If it just helps other children, if his treatments and the knowledge they learn from him, if it could just help other children also win the battle, even if he doesn't, if it helps other children, it's still a battle worth fighting. It seems to me, I think sometimes, that God put him on this earth to give us the joy. That love that he gives is just something that's, that I really cherish, I'll tell you. Makes you the wealthiest person on earth. If I had one prayer for the children at St. Jude, that is to find a cure for the cancer. Someday they will. I know it in my heart. I believe that they will get a cure for it someday. The leukemia in Holly's body is spreading faster. Too fast for the doctors to control. For Holly, the end grows near. She's, she's a lot sicker now. She's really gone down. She weighs probably 25 pounds. She's totally exhausted. Her body, she, you know, she's gone through a lot of pain. And I think that's it. And she's, it's like last night when she's crying. And she said, I don't want to quit. I don't want to die. She cares a lot about life, and she's not going to give up on it yet. And she is a real inspiration to me. And I hope that if I ever get to my time in life where I'm facing the inevitable, which she is, that I'll have as much courage as she has, and that I'll still care that much about fighting for, for one more day, one more week, one more hour. To me, I mean, Holly's enriched my life as much as you know, she's enriched the lives of all the people she touches. I think that this, everybody in this hospital, everybody that she touched, will experience an enormous amount of grief, an enormous sense of loss. But I think we'll be all be there together for each other. And I think in that loss, it'll make all of us work even harder for the next child. Holly's made us, I think, better doctors because uh, it's given us more of an emphasis to go back and do more work and improve the therapy and improve the basic understanding of the disease. The changes have been massive in six years in terms of our knowledge about the biology of leukemia. And as long as you continue to see that, uh, then you continue to go on and you have a lot of hope that the disease will be cured. It's for the next patient like Holly that you work so hard to improve the therapy because you know that there's going to be another child just like Holly, who's going to come through the door. If we can make a 5% impact, and that means five more children out of 100 like Holly will be cured. So obviously, when you bring it down to that individual level, clearly we have to go on, and we have to go on fighting for people like Holly. This year, 10,000 more children will be diagnosed with cancer. And unless there's some miraculous breakthrough, almost half will die. Yet the statistics can't convey the lost potential of a single child or recount the daily acts of courage. They can't tell us about the children like Holly who desperately try to pack years of living into the waning moments of their lives. Won't you help save a child? Become a partner in hope. 
phone right now with your pledge of $16 a month. When you become a partner in Hope, each month you'll receive a picture and information about a St. Jude child your gift is helping. You'll also receive a special display folder for all your pictures. So make that pledge. You can be assured your gift is used wisely and effectively for the treatment of a child and for desperately needed research. We can't fight this battle alone, as our special friend Betty White can tell you. We poke a lot of fun at the idea of growing old on Golden Girls. But to almost half the children at St. Jude Children's Research Hospital, growing old would be the greatest gift of all. We're talking about the children that St. Jude loses each year because we just don't know enough about cancer and about other catastrophic children's diseases. Please, help stop the dying. Believe me, your call can help. Call now. Betty's so right. You can help. You see, St. Jude Children's Research Hospital is not supported by any particular institution or religion. And we're proud that since opening our doors in 1962, no child has ever been turned away because of his family's inability to pay. So for the sake of a child, call with your $16 a month pledge. Or if you'd rather make a single contribution of $25, $50, or $100, we urge you to call now. It's the 4th of July, and Holly has talked her doctors into letting her attend this party. It's a party for one of her best friends from the hospital. Bruce is in remission and off therapy, and Holly is determined to celebrate this event with him. Oh, Holly, that's Bruce. This is not me, Holly, because I didn't have hair, no. and I didn't have on any clothes. Holly's grabbing on to life. Holly's grabbing on to this party. Holly realizes her time's short. I'd much rather her go to the 4th of July picnic today, he, you know, even with that weight loss, than have hospitalized her. And if this is what she wants to do, then in this current situation, I think all of us feel that that's what Holly should do. She can go on, she can go to this party, she can enjoy herself, and that's another little piece of living that she gets. Okay, let's have a big smile. Oh, my close Well, some, some nights we just hold each other and cry because I don't know what to say anymore. We've been very honest throughout the whole thing. And I can't tell her, Holly, they've got a miracle up their sleeve. They're not, you know, because they don't. The only thing I can tell her is, let's don't quit now. We've come too far. She woke up last night crying. She dreamed they gave her the last treatment they had, she said. And it didn't work, and they told her they had nothing else. Have we got this wrapped underneath? <laughs> One night she was crying and she told me they're never going to get me well and I'm so sick of this. And I thought maybe she's ready to give up. Maybe this is what she's trying to tell me. I finally just told her, I said, you tell me when you want to quit because I won't ever want to. So I told her, do you know what research is? And I said, they've already given you three, four treatments that they didn't even have, hadn't even thought of when we came in. And that's what you know, that's the important thing. Because even it's helped Holly. I've had two and a half years with her I wouldn't have had. So that's helped. It helped me, helped Holly. But it's helped a lot of other kids too. The research will be good. For my personal loss, it's hard to, hard to say something good is going to come from this because I'm selfish. I want Holly. One week after these pictures were taken, Holly Wallace died peacefully in her sleep, surrounded by people she loved and people who loved her. Later, Brandon Burdick returned to St. Jude for another MRI exam. It showed no growth in his tumor. 
After the exam, he got an ice cream cone and a haircut. Brian McAllister went for his semi-annual checkup. The test showed he was cancer-free. In two more years, doctors will consider him cured. I knew Holly Wallace personally. I talked with her, held her hand, kissed her. I'll never forget her. You see now why every minute, every second of the day is a life and death struggle for the children of St. Jude. But you can help when you become a partner in hope with your $16 a month pledge. And each month we'll send you a picture and a report on the St. Jude child your gift is helping. And if your circumstances change and you have to discontinue your pledge, you may. But please call. And you can use your Visa or MasterCard for automatic payment. Or if you'd rather give a single gift of $25, $50, $100, we urge you to make that gift. Chemotherapy and radiotherapy treatments are so expensive. Yet there can be no greater joy, no greater victory, my friends, than helping save a young life. Call now. Operators will be on hand after the close of our program. And if by chance you're not near a phone, write to us at St. Jude Children's Research Hospital, Box 50, Memphis, Tennessee. That's St. Jude Children's Research Hospital, Box 50, Memphis, Tennessee. On behalf of all the staff at St. Jude Hospital, I thank you for joining us, and thank you for supporting children like Brian, Brandon, and Holly. Danny Thomas once again, please don't turn your television off without responding to this program. Children's lives are at stake. Now our phone lines will remain open after we leave the air, so call right now. <laughs> 